Rest you merry. At this same ancient feast of Capulet, such the fair Rosaline, whom you so love, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face to some that I shall show, and I'll make you think you swan a crow. When the devout religion of mine eye maintains such falsehood, they turn tears to fires. One fairer than my love, the all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Tart, you saw her fair, none else being by, herself poised with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scales, let there be wage your lady's love against some other maid, that I shall show you shining at this feast. And she shall scant show well, that now shows best. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendour of mine own. My mate made a twelve-year-old, I bid her come. What lamb, what ladybird? God forbid, where's this girl? What Julia, Miss Nicole? Oh, your mother. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. You know my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I know her age unto an hour. She's not fourteen. How long is it now to Lammas Tide? A fortnight and odd days. E even or odd, of all the days of the year, come Lammas Tide at night, shall she be fourteen. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, as I said, come Lammas Tide at night, shall she be fourteen, that shall she marry. I remember it well. It is now since the earthquake eleven years that she was weaned. As I said, I shall never forget it, of all the days of the year upon that day. For I'd lay wormwood to my dove, oh. sitting in the sun under the dove house wall. My lord and you were then at Mantua. Nay, I do bear a brain, that as I said, when it did taste the wormwood on the nipple of my dove, and it did taste bitter, pretty fool, to see it touch you and fall out with the dove. It is since that time now eleven years. For then she could stand alone, nay, by the road. She could run and waddle all about, and even the day before she broke her brow. Oh, and then my husband, God be with his soul, he was a very man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, does thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backwards when thou hast more wit. Wilt thou not, Joel? And by my holiday, the pretty wretch left crying, and said I, to see now how such a jest shall come about, I warrant if I should live a thousand years, I shall never forget it. And the pretty fool, it stinted and said I. Oh, enough of this. I pray thee, hold thy peace. <laughs> yes, madam. Yet I cannot choose but laugh to think that it should leave crying and say I. <sighs> and yet I warrant it upon my brow, a bump as big as a young cockerel stone, a palace knock, and it did cry bitterly. Yea, quoth he. Dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backwards when thou hast come of age. Wilt thou not do? It stinted and said I. And stint thou too, I pray thee, now say I. <laughs> Peace I have done, God mark you to his rest. You were the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed, and I might live to see you married once. I have my wish. <gasps> marry? That marry is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet. How stands your disposition to be married? It is an honour that I dream not of. An honour? Were not I your only nurse, <laughs> I would say that you had sucked wisdom from my teeth. Well, think of marriage now. Why, younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. <laughs> By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now made. Thus, then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man! Young lady, lady, such a man as all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Oh, Verona, summer hath not such a flower. Hey, a flower, faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love this gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris' face and find delight writ there with beauty spent. So shall you share all that he does possess, and by having him, making yourself no less 
No less they bigger women grow by men. <laughs> Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris's love? I'll look to like, if looking like can move. But no more deep will I endart my eye than your consent to give strength to make it fly. Madam, oh, the guests are come, supper served up, you called, my young lady asked for, the nurse cursed in the pantry, and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait. I beseech you follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. Go, girl! Seek happy nights to happy days. <laughs> 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 Give me a torch. I'm not this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. <laughs> not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead so sticks me to the ground I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above <laughs> a common bound. I am too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar with his light feathers. And so bound, I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it, should you burden love, too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? Tis too rough, too brood, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. If love be rough of you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. Come, no condenser, and no sooner in, but every man betake him to his late. A torch for me. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair, and I am done. Come, we burn daylight. Ho! Nay, that's not so. And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamed a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? That the dreamers often lie. In bed asleep, where they do dream things true. <laughs> oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes made of long spider's legs, her cover of the wings of grasshoppers, her traces of the smallest spider web, her collars of the moonshine's watery beams, her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film, her wagoner, a small grey-coated gnat, not so big as a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut, made by the joiner squirrel or old grub, time out of mind the fairies' coachmakers. And in this state, she gallops, night by night, through lovers' brains, and then they <laughs> dream of love. Oh, a courtier's knees that dream on curtsies straight. Or oh, a lawyer's fingers who straight dream on fees. Or oh, a lady's lips which straight on kisses dream. Which off the angry mouth of blisters plays because their breath with sweetmeats tainted are. Sometimes she gallops o'er a courtier's nose and then dreams he of spelling out a suit. And sometimes comes she with a tithe pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose as he lies asleep, and then dreams he of another benefice. Sometimes she drives across a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches and buscados, Spanish blades, of pulse five fathom deep. And then a nun drums in his ear, at which he starts and wakes, and thus being frighted, swears a prayer or two, and sleeps again. This is that very mab that plaits the manes of horses in the night, which once untangled much misfortune bodes. This is the hag, when maids lie on their backs, that presses them, and lands them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she! Peace, peace, Mercutio, peace. You talk of nothing. True, I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence, yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels, and expire the term of a despised life closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the steerage of my course direct my sail, on, lusty gentlemen, strike drum! <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen! 
Ladies that have their toes unplagued with thorns will have a bout with you. <laughs> Aha, my mistresses. Who among you now will deny to dance? She that makes dainty, she, I'll swear, has corns. <laughs> Am I coming in you now? A hall, a hall, give room and foot it, girls. <laughs> Sarah, this unlooked for sport comes well. Nay sit, nay sit, good cousin Capulet, for you and I are past our dancing days. <laughs> How long is now is this now since last yourself and I were in a mask? By your lady, thirty years. What night is not so much? Tis not so much. Tis since the nuptials of Lucentio come Pentecost as quickly as it will. Some five and twenty years, and then we must. That is more, tis more. His son is elder. His son is thirty. <laughs> Will you tell me that? His son was but a war two years ago. What lady is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, cuz. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use for earth too dear. So shows the snowy dove trooping with crows, as yonder lady are her fellows shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and, touching hers, make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now, forswear its sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This fine voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy! Slave come hither, covered with an antic face, to scorn and flare at a solemnity. Now I stalk and honor my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite, to scorn at a solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? <laughs> Tis he, that villain, Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman. And to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all the town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. It is my will. The which, if thou respect, show a fair presence, and put off these frowns and ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. Fits when such a villain is a guest, I'll not endure him! He shall be endured! What good one, boy, I say he shall go to? Am I the master here or you go to? You'll not endure him. God, you mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You will set cock -hope. You'll be the man. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boyist. So indeed. And this trick may chance to scare you. I know what. You must contrary me. <laughs> May it is time. Well said, my heart. You are a princox. Go, be quiet, or... More light, more light for shame. I'll make you quiet. <laughs> what cheerly, my heart. <laughs> I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall now seem sweet. Convert to bitter gall. <laughs> 